for it. Hello, everyone. Uh, Mary and Nancy back here with Now You Know. So, Mary, what do you have? Anything interesting? Um, I had a busy day. Is that interesting? Sure. Okay, good. Uh, I do. I have interesting things about the UK. Okay. Laws in the UK. Do you want to start with whales? Sure. Okay. When a whale or a sturgeon becomes beached, it must be offered up to the reigning monarch. Oh. So you, you're down the beach. Yes. You'll see a whale or a sturgeon come up. You dial the castle and you say, I'd like to offer Queen Elizabeth a whale. Oh. And then she says, yes. Or because she gets right on the phone personally because she's like really into this whale thing. And she gets on the phone and she goes, hello. And you say, hi, I'm Mary from Canada. And I understand if I find a whale, I'm supposed to let you know. She goes, I love me. What if my dominions found a whale? And I say, do you want it? She goes, oh, yes. Could you please bring it over to me? And so ever... now I have to pay the expense of bringing the whale. OMG. Does she ever say, send the whale to Wales? <gasps> Could you send the whale to Wales? <laughs> Speaking of the UK, yeah, the meaning of the phrase "a nation of shopkeepers." Okay, this this is a proverbial saying. It has a straightforward literal meaning, although it is intended to imply criticism of the English as a nation with little ambition. <laughs> well, I think shopkeepers have lots of ambition. Exactly. So I don't know. There's no explanation of who who wrote that. <laughs> Hello, yes, I'd like to talk to the shopkeepers. Please, please get more ambition. Exactly. It's her job to do that. I know. What, but what, you know what else? No. The queen will never be seen doing because it's illegal. It is actually illegal to be found drunk in the pub. Oh, okay. So when she's drunk in the pub, I imagine they kick everybody else out, right? So that she can't be seen there. So she's like this when she drinks. <laughs> I think it's so funny that Canada is so far away. <laughs> you were big, you were sounding a little bit like a drunken British witch. Well, the queen. Just <laughs> Sorry, Queenie. Just saying there. All right, have you ever heard of the expression, a bunch of fives? I have not. It's a fist. They it's give you, you a put... bunch of fives. Exactly, I love that one. Oh, queen, you're bugging me. I'm going to give you a bunch of fives. So here's the thing. You ready for this? Yes. You're in a pub in the UK. You're drunk. Your buddy says, I found a whale. And you say... If you tell anybody about that, I'm going to give you a bunch of fives. Exactly. <laughs> cool. It's just, isn't it interesting how it all meshes in together like that? I'm like, not quite sure where the queen fits into that, but whatever. Well, yeah, exactly. Whatever. Nancy. <laughs> what? <laughs> when you're in England. Yes. It, don't ever carry a plank of wood along the pavement. Oh, okay. Okay. So <laughs> like. You know, you got a big piece of, of plank of wood and you go, how do I get that down the street? You can't carry it because that is illegal, especially if you're going to take it to a pub and get drunk next to a whale. My goodness. They're, they're mean there. They're just darn right mean. I know they are mean. They are oh, mean. Gosh. You know what? But, the yeah, go but, ahead. Go but ahead. I just wanted to tell you. A few weeks back, we talked about in Newfoundland, where it was illegal to herd your cows down the road after 8 a.m. Yes. It's also illegal to walk your cows down the street in, day, in daylight in England. Oh, my gosh. Well, what did they so do that's where the... it came from, because we're always saying, where did that ridiculous law come from? We 
found it. And Newfoundland had to adopt the same rule. What the heck is wrong with them? Well, they were a British colony way longer than we were. Well, yeah, but that's no excuse. Oh, okay. Gosh. All right. Um, uh, okay, here's one. A fish rots from the head down. I've heard that one. Do you it's know back it? to the whale. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Because, you know, it's a it's an euthanism. I'm having trouble with that word. An euthanism way of expressing the benefits of sex. <laughs> That's, yes, seriously, I don't know. I, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Because I always understood it to mean that if the head of a company or a country or something like that, the head of that organization is bad, then everything underneath it would rot. Yeah. Or, that's or what I understood it. One of the things that says, a little of what you fancy does you good. It, it's just weird. I don't know. It's all mixed up together. <laughs> Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I copied parts of one thing and part of another. You know, I do think so, because I do think it really means that the, the head is rotten, everything yes. else underneath is going to be rotten. You're absolutely right. OMG, my error. Um, so you know what I'm going to do in order to get back at you for that? And this is illegal in England as well. Since 1839, it is a gate the law to knock on somebody's front door and run away. Oh, well, I'm glad that should be illegal. Sounds like fun. Well, yeah, but we used to, you know, well, no, not we. We is not me, okay? Is you just get some chewing gum and stick it on somebody's doorbell and then run away. Why do you stick it on their doorbell? So it'll keep ringing. You're cruel. Well, I didn't do it. I'm just saying. <laughs> it is cruel. <laughs> you know what? Uh, no. In the UK, you can't even dress up as a policeman, an officer, a sailor, or a soldier, even for a costume party. Well, but I guess you can do it to be a tinker or a tailor. Hey, what is a tinker? Is that uh, like somebody who has a problem with uh, some letters? <laughs> I don't know. I think a tinker works with uh, metal. Uh, oh, yep. A tinker is a person who travels from place to place mending metal uh, utensils as a way of making a living. Ah, a profession yeah. that's gone by the wayside, I believe. Should we bring it back? Uh, well, yes, you go, you go for it, Mary. Okay, I'll go for it. Yeah, what else a, you got for me, Nancy? Um, a load of cobblers. Never heard that one. That means n rubbish or nonsense. Say it to me again. A load of cobblers, it means nonsense or rubbish. And why are cobblers silly or nonsensical? Well... I think that's insulting to cobblers. Yeah, it, it's from... Um, from the markets, from the, the fairgrounds, the traders, uh, the stall holders at fairgrounds, and um, was published in 1934, uh, and it started off as slang, some kind of street slang, okay? Okay. So, and it's probably from, probably British. <laughs> oh, it sounds very British, because I don't think we say cobblers or tink tinkers no. here, do we? No. No. What else do you have? Well, I need to tell you. And this is very important in British Columbia. In England, or in the UK, it's an offense to handle a salmon and look suspicious. Ooh, that's very suspicious looking. Now hold the salmon. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, how? Okay, so, but you could steal it and look really nice and innocent. No, it doesn't say anything about stealing it. It just says about handling it. Uh, yeah, but why would you handle it while looking suspicious? You know, so to me, that implies that you stole it or something, or you're trying to steal it. You're making an assumption there. I am, totally. Like you're looking suspicious, so you're thinking about maybe stealing it, you know? Maybe. It probably happens at a fish market somewhere, right? 
don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've got one more only. Okay. A pig in a poke. Yeah. I, I heard that one, but I didn't really understand the meaning before. It's um, an offer or deal that is foolishly accepted without being examined first. Yeah. You that makes that. sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I didn't know that. Well, because you probably haven't really poked a pig lately. Oh, <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> uh, I like the, you can't make a silk purse out of sow's ear. Yeah, I've heard that one, yeah. Or when pigs fly. Yeah. Yeah, do pigs ever fly? I personally have never, ever seen a pig fly. I haven't either. Even so that's when, when I, was... I resort back to blue moon. But now we're getting blue moon. Yes, we are. Well, who knew? Well, it says you do get a blue moon once every... Once in a blue moon. Once you yeah. get one every few months or something like that. Few months? Every three months or two months or something. Certain times. Um, I, don't, I don't remember now, Mary, but we did discuss that at one time. We did. Yes, we did. Now, we're supposed to remember these things, you know? Okay, so a seasonal blue, a seasonal blue moon takes place slightly less frequently than monthly blue moons in the uh, okay a blue moon occurs roughly every two or three years oh two or three years and i said months yeah what's a month a year i was close right i mean it takes so place. i've got one more pig thing to, to to close us off with since we were on the pig thing okay we were on a pig thing in the uk it is against the law to have a pig sty at your front at the front of your house to have a pig what a pig sty. A sty. A pig sty. Oh, at the front of your house. Okay. Well, they're embarrassed. They don't want people to know that they have pigs. So that's why they want it in the back where nobody can see it. Your neighbors or whatever like that. You know, they want to don't want to come up to your door and hear all the time. Do that again? <laughs> no. <laughs> I got another pig thing. Uh -huh. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roasty. This little piggy had none. And this little piggy went bye, 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 everybody. <laughs> bye, Nancy. Bye, Mary. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again. High five, Mary. High five. Bye. High five. Bye. Bye.